Hey everyone, it's Kenji. Uh, we're gonna make some salsa verde. So I was actually actually already started making it um, and then thought maybe you'd wanna see it. So I shoved on the camera. Um, all I've done so far is I've taken some tomatillos. Um, I've peeled the skins off. I've halved them and then I've laid them out face down on the sheet tray. If you wanna be lazy about it, you can just do them any which way, it doesn't really matter. I've got these uh, Anaheim peppers. You could also use hatch chilies. You could use poblanos. You could use serrano. You could use jalapeno really depending on what flavor you want and how hot you want it. Um, so I've got those chilies. I've taken out the seeds, split them in half, also put them face down. I got about a quarter of an onion um, that I've basically just separated into a few, you know, each each piece has like a few layers in it. Doesn't really matter too much. I'm gonna lay those out um, and then I've got a few cloves of garlic that I've also peeled and just laid out on this tray. So salsa verde, if there's one salsa that you should know how to make, it should be this one, I think. You could also do this with regular tomatoes if you want. If you don't have access to tomatillos, it'll be excellent. Um, or you could use canned tomatillos. It just takes a little bit longer to broil. Um, so what we are doing is we're gonna broil these. Um, I have the pro broiler preheated on high. Um, Typically the way a salsa like this would be made it would be on a comal, so like a, a hot surface, either stone or, or cast iron or something like that. Um, a hot surface that you would um, then sear all of this stuff on, all the whole chilies, all the whole tomatillos until they get nice and darkly charred and soft. Um, and then you make the salsa out of that. Um, I don't have a comal, it also makes a lot of smoke. Uh, so, you know, you could potentially do it in a carbon steel pan or a cast iron skillet, um, a dry one, no oil at all. But um, what happens is that it does tend to stick to the bottom of the pan, no matter how well seasoned it is. There's going to be like some burnt on crud that's a pain to get out. So I don't really like doing it that way. I prefer the broiler method. So I'm just going to shove all of these under the broiler until they are nice and really nicely blackened on the top. You'll see what I mean when I pull it out. It's going to take, I don't know, about... 10 minutes, maybe 11 minutes, I don't know, some amount of time. Um, I stopped it once, I opened this up once in the middle just so I could um, move the vegetables around so that they would get evenly blackened. Um, but that's about what you're looking for. So everything should be kind of tender. Um, and where's my other towel? Here. And if you really want to sort of emphasize that blackened flavor, um, what you can do is get yourself one of these, blowtorch. And you can kind of add some extra char to it. The level you go is totally up to you. I'd say about that much is good for me. All right. Um, so, like I said, you can do this with regular regular tomatoes also. It doesn't have to be um, tomatillos. Really, the, the technique is the sort of important part. But I do like the way uh, tomatillos taste this also. Um, so, you'll see, I'm going to just blend this up with some cilantro. I don't know where my... Uh, oh, I was using my other rubber spatula earlier today. Um, so, the only difference is that... The only real difference between using regular tomatoes and tomatillos is that tomatillos are very tart, whereas regular tomatoes are not. Um, so tomatillos, you don't really need to add any citrus. You could add a little bit of lime juice if you wanted to, um, but you don't have to. They're going to be plenty tart on their own. Um, whereas if I was doing this with red tomatoes, um, I would add some kind of, I would add lime juice or lemon juice or you know some kind of some kind of acid to balance out that flavor. Acid is really important in food. All right, big pinch of salt. Salsa needs to be well seasoned. Cilantro, you can use the leaves and the fine stems. You don't really have to be too careful about picking off cilantro, especially when it goes into something like this. Um, and then you could do this in a blender. You can do it, I'm gonna do it in a blender, obviously. You can do it in a food processor. You could also do it in a mocajete, you know, like a mortar, uh, Mexican mortar and pestle. Um, in the past, I've talked about how much flavor a mocajete can add to things like salsa and guacamole, stuff like that. Um, for a salsa like this, it's actually not gonna make a huge difference. Um, it'll mainly be a textural difference, but you know the way the reason a mocajete adds flavor to um, things like guacamole and fresh salsas is that you're um, rupturing cells and releasing um, the aromatic compounds inside. Um, in this one, your cells are already basically ruptured through the act of cooking, so there's not really much that a mocajete is gonna do that a food processor or a blender can't, um, other than just give you a sort of more interesting, uh, more interesting texture. Um, let me taste this just for seasoning, but I think it's probably good. Mm. 
Actually, I could use a tiny bit more salt. That is really good, though. Um, and finally, I'll, I'll link to a a full recipe for this in the description below. Um, but the other thing you can do with this salsa, if you want to add another layer of flavor, is that you can sear it in a pan. So you get like a um, a heavy, like an enamel cast iron would work, work really well, or a stainless steel, a heavy saucepan, um, heated up really hot, hot enough that you would be searing your meat in it, you know, like hot, as hot as you would get it to sear a steak or something. Um, and once it's that hot, turn it off the heat and just pour the salsa in there and you see it's gonna instantly sort of sputter, spit, change color, um, and that's going to add some of these more sort of caramelized brown flavors um, that can really, oh man, that's good, intensify it. Um, all right. I don't have any chips or anything for this, but I'm gonna. I'm, I'm grilling some chicken tonight, and I'm making making some tacos, which is why I was making this uh, salsa this afternoon. <clears throat> but we can still we can still take a nice little picture for the thumbnail. And you see how nice and thick it is. That's 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 from the um, pectin in the tomatillos. Let's cover up that. And unfortunately, no taste for the dogs today because it's got too much onion in it. All right, I don't really need to show you the rest. Um, guys, gals, non-binary pals, I hope you enjoyed that. It's quick and easy. Uh, it's great on everything. Uh, just learn how to make it and then make it often. Never buy your salsa again, all right? All right, see you later. Bye. Hey everyone, it's Kenji. There are 22 million kids in this country that rely on school lunches for nutritious meals. And with schools closed now more than ever, organizations like No Kid Hungry can use their support. So I'm asking you to join me. Uh, click the link in the description below to donate some money. No amount is too small or too big. Thank you very much and stay safe. Bye-bye.